you have an oil bath pump that takes oil, it should not burn oil, but you definitely want to make sure oil is in it. Halfway is where you want to be at all times. If you're a little over, no problem. You just don't want to fill it completely up to the top. You want to be somewhere in between these two marks on your dipstick. Same thing, your engine takes oil. Dipstick here. You have a high and a low mark on your dipstick. Engine takes 30 weight engine oil. Your pump takes 30 weight non-detergent oil. As far as starting procedures, the biggest thing you want to be aware of is to always pull the trigger when you're starting it so you don't put the engine uh, starter solenoid in a bind. So you're going to pull the choke on this side and then turn your key. off and release your pressure. Also when you're using the machine, say you're washing, you got to lay it down to move something. That's what we call leaving the machine in bypass. What happens is the pump is still turning, the engine's still running, so you're building up pressure in your pump. So it recirculates about a cup full of water under high pressure and uh, that will get really hot after uh, about two minutes. So two minutes is a rule of thumb. No more than two minutes in bypass. If you're going to be longer, it's best to turn the machine off and pull the trigger and release the pressure. But uh, also, if you lose pressure, check your, your soap valve right here. This is out in the open right now, and it's not in soap. So if I'm running the machine and open this, I'm going to pull air up into the pump, and I'm going to lose all pressure. Uh, also, when you, when you first put this in soap, you want to... Uh, you're going to get a little bit of pulsation. It's going to suck in a little bit of air that's in the line. So you want to trigger it a few times and eventually it will smooth out and start pulling your soap through the line. But just make sure that's always off if you're not using any kind of chemical or soap. The biggest things are shutting it down hot and leaving it in bypass. That's what hurts pressure washers the most. Uh, this unloader valve, it's, they work really well and they're great for safety because you can, you can have a trigger gun on it, but if you're always leaving it in bypass and walking away and the thing's running, you're going to burn up this unloader valve uh, probably after two or three times of doing that. Uh, shutting it down hot, what happens is you shut it down hot, that water is, is uh, really hot inside that cool and it's going to start to expand, so it's going to push hot water back towards the pump and it's going to make those seals kind of flimsy. Uh, and the next time you crank it up, it's going to start ripping the seals and it can also burn out the O-rings of your unloader. And of course, it can uh, be kind of dangerous because that water is going to find a way to get out because it's so hot and it's going to expand. So uh, you have a pressure valve, a relief valve, and most of the time it will blow out of that. Um, 
Just check your oils, look for leaks on your quick connects. After a while, after a uh, gun has a lot, lots of usage, you want to make sure it is shutting off when you let off the trigger. If you're getting a lot of water, just a stream of it rolling out of it, it's going to cause your unloader to go in and out of bypass, so you want to go ahead and get a new gun to replace that. Other than that, um, what temperature you should keep uh, the, the tank? As far as this machine goes, uh, about the hottest you're going to get is 180. So I wouldn't set it any higher than 180. Uh, just for if say you have something that goes wrong and the thermostat stays on uh, It could reach 248 before it shuts down. So 180 is going to be your max It's not going to rob you of any temperature. So I just keep it at that unless you need less you can set it at less Once it hits 180 regardless if you got the trigger pulled or not It's going to shut the burner off until it cools down enough to kick it back on What type of fuel the unit use? Okay Right here, everything's labeled. You got diesel fuel right here for your burner system. You can use kerosene also. Uh, gas for your engine right here. Do not get them mixed up. What is used uh, this tank that you have here? This is your float tank, the way it originally comes plumbed here. Uh, you can hook a water hose here and run it like you this is replacing this. This is a 325 gallon tank versus a five gallon tank right here. So in the winter time, you can turn this three-way valve that's by your water filter. You can turn this valve to the on position, which will shut this tank off and open this tank. And you can have a water and a freeze mixture here. So once you do that, you crank your machine up, run it, until you see antifreeze coming out the end of the, the hose and shut the machine down and then you're winterized uh, for freezing temperature. Also you got a water filter right here, a can type filter. Has a screen on the inside. Here's what most people do. They empty it out. Well, most of the time, there's an orange O-ring in there. Most of the time that hits the ground and they don't see it and they put it back on there and there's no seal in between this can and the filter top. So you suck air and it will not prime the pump. So make sure if you dump that out, clean it out, that this O-ring doesn't fall on the ground or if it does, put it back in there. So now I had that off and I opened up an air pocket here. So I'm going to go ahead and bleed your system. Get the air back out of it. Always pulling the trigger when starting. lever out, pull it up and lock it on that little adapter right there. So now your hose wheel is free to roll or roll back up. So the unit come with how many linear feet of hose? 100 foot of R2 high pressure hose. Okay. You have a drain on your tank. Uh, this is an important. Most of the time, if you're going down the road and you don't, and you you got water at the location you're going, I wouldn't haul it with water in. It's more wear and tear on your trailer and on the vehicle that you're pulling. So you can turn your drain here and go ahead and drain that water out. In the summertime, you can uh, grow algae because it's so hot in Texas. So if you're going to store it for a while, if it's going to be setting, go ahead and drain all the water out. Keep that growth from uh, growing inside the tank.
So how do you clean the tank? Always drain it. And you can also take your, uh, your pressure washer, but you're gonna have to hook the water hose up to that float tank that's on the machine, because now you're, you don't have water in this tank. So turn your valve, hook a water hose up there, and you can take your pressure washer and wash it out while this drain is open and get all the algae, if, if you do grow algae on the inside of it. You have a fuel filter here for your burner. Um, I wouldn't replace this unless you're having problems with your burner. Most of the time, if you are having problems with your burner and you have fuel in your tank, a good sign is it'll light for a minute when you pull the trigger and all of a sudden it'll go out. That's a telltale sign that your fuel filter is clogged up. But uh, I just wouldn't replace it until you actually have issues. Battery here. This has a 120 volt generator that runs the burner system under here. It's not made to run anything else other than this burner system. So don't plug any, any uh, power tools or anything like that because you'll draw too many amps um, while the machine's running. Okay. What else? And then over here we got the engine oil filter. The engine oil filter. Up here. Air filter. Air filter. Chuck. Throttle. And the throttle. Also, throttle stays open all the time because if you're running the burner, this this engine turns at a certain RPMs that puts out 120 volts on your generator. So if you're half throttle, you're going to be half the voltage down here, and that burner will try to run. And what will happen is it'll get too hot and you'll start burning wires up and components. Drain tube here for your uh, engine oil when you're draining it. Drain tube here for pump oil. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, that's the completion of a uh, quick training how to use an eight. 1200 series Hussey pressure washer.